In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the simple harmonic motion of a pendulum and an oscillating spring with a mass attached to it. In each of these cases, we're going to be producing a position versus time graph, a velocity versus time graph, and an, an acceleration versus time graph. Um, the analysis of each of these three is a little bit tricky, um, but once you get the main idea of how each of them work, you should be applied those skills to different types of scenarios and graphs. So let's take a look at our pendulum first. So I labeled them as AL, as in just the amplitude on the left side, amplitude on the right, and then EQ as in the equilibrium position. And we're gonna start at the equilibrium position, and then we're gonna work our way up to the AR position and then back over and then back to the um, equilibrium position once again. So we have one full cycle and, or one full period to analyze. Now what happens with a pendulum is it has the greatest amount of force when it's at its highest position because there's a component of gravity that's trying to pull it back to the equilibrium position. So just like all things that are in simple harmonic motion, um, as they move farther from the equilibrium position, um, the restorative force pulls more and more to bring it back. So at this spot over here, it has the most amount of speed, but the smallest amount of force. And then at the two ends, the AR side and the AL side is where it has the greatest restorative force. So, so we're going to start at our equilibrium, uh, equilibrium position and call that position zero, um, which would mean if we call this position zero, that would mean this is the negative direction, the negative X direction, and this is the positive X direction. Okay, so as we're starting from the equilibrium position and moving to the right, our position is going to increase in the positive direction, and then it is going to hit that first amplitude on the right side. And you can see that the curve is flattening out because the force is increasing to slow down its rise in position. And then it's going to send it back with a lot of force. Remember when it's at its greatest um, position over here, it's going to pull it back with the greatest amount of force, sending it back to the equilibrium position once again. And then from there, it's going to move back to its greatest negative position, which we call a L. And remember, because that force is increasing more and more as we go towards AL, um, the rate that that position is changing is going to be less and less. And then again, if this position has the greatest restorative force, so it's going to pull it back as quickly as it can at first, and then a little bit less as we go to send it back to the equilibrium position once again. All right, now taking a look at the velocities. Now we're taking a look at something different, so we have to kind of change modes of what we're thinking about. And we are starting at EQ over here. And remember, EQ is where it's at its maximum velocity. And then these points over here is where we're going to be at rest. So let's go ahead and say V equals the maximum right here. All right, so we're at a maximum velocity. So we'll just kind of put a dot up there and then call that our equilibrium position. And then from there, it's going to start from its greatest velocity and reach a velocity of zero. Its velocity is going to drop off um, more and more quickly because that force is getting greater and greater pushing against it as it rises to its maximum position. So it reaches that point, which we called um, a R. So it has a velocity of zero right there. And then um, from there, it's going to go back in the negative direction. So it's going to dip below zero. So it's going to start to increase its velocity sort of quickly at first and then a little bit less and less and then reach its equilibrium position again where it reaches that maximum uh, magnitude of its velocity. So if this was a, say, positive 10, this would be a negative 10. And then it's going to sweep back up towards the peak position at AL and have a velocity of zero. And then when it returns back to the equilibrium position, um, what it's gonna do is it's going to move towards it sort of quickly and then less and less as it gets towards that equilibrium position to reach its maximum velocity once again. 
Now, finally, we're going to take a look at the acceleration versus time graph. And I actually just think of forces when I'm thinking about the acceleration versus time graph because force and acceleration are directly related to one another. So if you could think about when it has more and more force or less and less force, that applies to the acceleration as well. So if we're starting at the equilibrium position, which we did for all the cases, we have no force at the equilibrium position, which means we have no acceleration. Um, but then from there, um, what's going to happen is we're going to have a force going back against it. So it's going in the negative direction to oppose the motion of the object to make it slow down and then come to a rest here. So we're going to have some negative force and then more and more negative force and the greatest negative force when it reaches AR that eventually brings it to rest. That negative force is going to decrease as it comes back to its equilibrium position until it has no force once again at its equilibrium position. And then now as it's going towards AL, now it has a force opposing it to the right. So that is a positive force that is pushing more in the beginning and then, or excuse me, less in the beginning and then more and more until it has the most amount of restorative force at AL pushing in the positive direction which then pushes it back and makes it return back to the equilibrium position once again. Okay, so when you're analyzing each of these, and what we did is we paid attention, we kind of like switch modes to what we're thinking. We're thinking about position, basically where it's at, where it's um, um, placed at any specific time, how fast it's going at any specific moment. And then for the acceleration part, I often think about the amount of restorative force and then we think about how it's increasing or decreasing. We know it's going to be some kind of sinusoidal um, type curve in the end, but is it going to be a steeper slope or is it going to be a flatter slope? Those are things that we have to pay attention to as well. So now when we take a look at the oscillating spring, um, it's actually going to look exactly the same as our previous graphs. The reason being is because its motion does look different, but it does resemble the pendulum in many ways because it starts from equilibrium position, moves towards a positive X and has restorative force going in the negative direction and then get pushes back, accelerates, reaches its maximum velocity at the equilibrium position, moves towards the negative X while the restorative force pushes to the right at a positive direction. So the spring would start at zero and then it would get pushed out to its maximum positive position. And that positive position would send it back to its equilibrium position. And then from its equilibrium position, it would compress the spring as much as possible. That compression would cause it to accelerate quickly back to its equilibrium. So we have a position of zero, positive X, zero, negative x and then back to its equilibrium again showing a full cycle a full period now for the velocity remember it's at its greatest velocity right now if it's going through its equilibrium position so it has a great um a very high positive velocity and then that velocity is going to dip down sort of quickly towards zero as it reaches its maximum stretch and then as it stretch at its maximum point, it's going to send it back to the equilibrium position where it's going to reach its maximum speed once again, but heading in the negative direction. And then it's going to go hit zero again as it reaches its maximum compression. And then its maximum compression is going to send it quickly over and then less quickly over towards the end to its maximum velocity once again. So we're gonna start at a position of zero, greatest positive position, position of zero, negative X, and then zero once again. And by zero, I mean the equilibrium position we have over here, okay? And then the final one, uh, again, we're, we're producing the same graph. I'm just gonna talk you through it conceptually. Um, so for the acceleration, we have no force at the beginning because we're starting at the equilibrium position, which we're calling position zero. And then from there, it is having a restorative force that is that once the spring gets stretched to the right, it's going to be pulling back to the left. So that's a negative force that is going to become greater and greater and greater. And it's greatest at the positive X position once it's stretched as much as possible. And then as the stretch becomes less and less, 
um, the amount of force and acceleration is less and less. Hits its equilibrium position once more. Now the spring starts compressing more and more and more until it reaches its maximum compression at the negative X point. And then as it gets compressed less and less, there's going to be less and less force, less and less acceleration as it sends it back to the equilibrium position, position once again. Okay, now I so showed you two cases where I talked you through them conceptually. With different types of simple harmonic motion, you won't necessarily get the same position, velocity, and acceleration versus time graphs as you see on the screen right now, but you will use the same types of skills analyzing the position, velocity, and acceleration and thinking about the steepness of the curve. So I hope that was helpful at helping you see the shapes of those different graphs and analyze those different concepts. Thank you for watching and listening.